Good evening. Welcome to the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting of April 26, 2021. We are delighted to be here in person with everybody. Uh, we do have to remind everybody that uh, we will be following all safety uh, measures that we have in our schools, which include masks, social distancing, et cetera, and we do appreciate very much everyone's compliance with those. Uh, as long as we keep doing that, we get to continue meeting in person, which is just so much better for this, for this board. Uh, if you would like an agenda for this evening, you can find one outside the door to your right. If you are at home and you would like an agenda, you can find that on our website, and that would be at www.livoniapublicschools.org. If you hover over the board tab, you can drop down to board meeting information, and that's where you can find the agendas. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll for us this evening? Sure. Mrs. Acosta. Here. Mrs. Bonifield. Here. Mr. Centers. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Bradford says here. President Burton. Here. We have a quorum. The meeting this evening is what we call our general meeting, or other folks refer to it as a voting meeting. Uh, you may not hear the length of discussion on different items that you might expect before we vote on, on items. That is because they've been discussed at at least two other meetings prior to arriving at this meeting tonight. So please be assured that, uh, especially if there are, are large dollar value, uh, dollars associated with an item, we have discussed it at length before we bring it to tonight's meeting. If you're interested in hearing more of the discussion about the details of items that come before the board, I do suggest that you either attend or tune in uh, or watch after the fact our committee of the whole meetings. Those meetings are the ones where we have a lot of deep discussion about the items that come before the Board of Education. If they pass through all of that and we don't have any other questions on the items, that's when they come to tonight's meeting for a formal vote. In addition, tonight's meeting also has our honorees uh, of the month, and we have several special folks that we're going to be honoring this evening, and we are delighted that you guys are here. And your family and other support uh, folks, coaches and ADs are, and so forth are, are with you also. So we will get to you very quickly. Uh, one very important aspect of Livonia Public Schools is our commitment to character. One very important portion of that is respect. Uh, we insist on that between our students, between our adults, and from adults to students. And we as a Board of Education are deeply committed to that character trait also. Uh, you will see us displaying respect to one another, whether we agree or disagree on issues, we will always be committed to treating one another with respect. And we expect and ask that everyone who participates uh, with our meeting do the same. And we thank you for doing that. We find that there is no better way to teach our children that than by example. Uh, with that, we were going to get into the, the rest of our meeting. Uh, Mr. Centers, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are now at item three on our agenda, which is communications. The first item on our agenda under communications is a 3A, recognition of individual state champion athletes. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District adopt the attached resolutions recognizing Stevenson High School swimmer Mackenzie Soroki for capturing the MHSAA Girls Division I Swimming State Champion title, and Stevenson High School gymnast Autumn Ronikowski for achieving the MHSAA Division I Gymnastics State Champion title on the balance beam. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mrs. Jenkins, you can help Thank us out you. with this one. Thank you. Good evening, President Burton, members of the board, Superintendent Oakwist. Earning a state championship title in any sport is always an incredible accomplishment for our, for our student athletes. But this past year, with the pandemic, capturing that title holds even more meaning. Our honorees this evening have overcome obstacles and have shown that they are, both, they are tough both mentally and physically in their sport. Tonight, we are recognizing two outstanding young women 
for pushing through during, the, during this pandemic and remaining committed to try and do their very best. Our first honoree is Mackenzie Soroki, who is a sophomore at Stevenson High School. And we'll call Mackenzie over. Hi, you can have a seat. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Welcome. We celebrate Mackenzie's accomplishments in swimming, a sport that she has loved since she was a little girl making waves at the Burton Hollow Swim Club. Mackenzie earned the Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I State Championship title in the 100-yard breaststroke <clears throat> with a time of one minute and one, one minute and 1.45 seconds. Did I get that right? Okay. <laughs> this was uh, not only a great score to win the title, she also broke a school record with this time. Mackenzie had a great season this year in the pool, setting records in the 200-yard medley relay, the 50-yard freestyle, and the 100-yard breaststroke. She said, it, she said it is her goal to break the state record in the breaststroke and make the cut at the Olympic trials. You can do it. <laughs> she is coached by Greg Phil, who just finished his 35th uh, year as head coach of the girls swimming team at Stevenson. He has had many successes throughout his tenure, making the entire community proud of his athletes. When Mackenzie is not in the pool, she can be found on the ice playing hockey for hun the Honey Baked Ham 16U AAA ho hockey team. At this time, I would like to invite Trustee Tammy Bonifield to read a special resolution we have prepared for Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. Hello. Welcome to the meeting. Whereas the trustees of the Livonia Public Schools District Board of Education are desirous of publicly recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of students who, are disting who distinguish themselves during the pursuit of their public education in the school district, and whereas Mackenzie Siraki, a sophomore at Stevenson High School, has distinguished herself by achieving the 2021 Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I Girls Swim and Dive state championship title in the 100-yard breaststroke. And whereas Mackenzie has achieved this honor with a Stevenson High School record-setting time of 1 minute 1.45 seconds, and whereas this adds to the outstanding accomplishments Mackenzie has achieved during the 2021 season, including setting school and pool records in the 200-yard medley relay the 50-yard freestyle, and the 100-yard breaststroke. In addition to being designated as an all-state swimmer in the 200-yard medley relay, the 50-yard freestyle, and the 100-yard breaststroke, and being named All-American in the 100-yard breaststroke. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby commend and congratulate Mackenzie Soroki for her outstanding accomplishments in athletics and wish her well in the, her future endeavors as she applies the discipline and perseverance needed to excel in sports to all areas of her life. And real quick, I'd like to acknowledge um, Stevenson High School Athletic Director, Mrs. Lori Hyman is here, and also Coach Greg is here. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay, and with that, Mackenzie, would you like to hang out with us while we do autumn? Sure. Okay. It's kind of neat up here, isn't it? Kind of comfortable? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, next up, we'd like to invite, uh, introduce Autumn Ranikowski, who is a junior at Stevenson High School. And Autumn's way in the back. Come on up. Hi, Autumn. Hi. Okay. Now we're going to brag about you for a few minutes, okay? <laughs> uh, we're here tonight to celebrate Autumn's accomplishments in gymnastics as a member of the Stevenson High School gymnastics team. Working through injuries through the se throughout the season, Autumn displayed her passion and determination by achieving the Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I Individual Gymnastics State title on the balance beam with a score of 9.575. Mm -hmm. 
This accomplishment capped off a very strong season for Autumn, who set a new school record on the uneven bars with a score of 9.575 and a new school record on the balance beam with a score of 9.6, in addition to a new school record in floor exercise with a score of 9.45. All of this during her first year as a member of the Stevenson G Gymnastics team. She is coached by Lisa Broomfield, who has successfully coached Spartan gymnasts for the past 15 years. She recently announced that she will be retiring, so we wish her all the best and thank her for the many years of coaching Stevenson's gymnasts. Autumn plans to compete, <coughs> compete during her senior year next year, but will first face a long recovery from a planned foot surgery next month. But not to worry, the first sign that Autumn has a strong determination was when she was born as a twin, two and a half months early, weighing a mere two pounds, seven ounces. Wow. Your mom gave me that information. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Autumn is college bound. With, she has her sights set on uh, Grand Valley or Mich uh, Central Michigan. And we wish Autumn and Mackenzie all the best in their futures. At this time, I would like to ask Vice President uh, Mark Johnson to read the resolution we have prepared for Autumn. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins, and, and welcome, Autumn. As a father of twins, and my son was only 1.5 ounces when he was born, I know what you went through. So <laughs> congratulations on that, and congratulations on your outstanding uh, year uh, this past season. And based on what you did this year, we're looking for really big things out of you next year. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Oh, microphone. Oh, there we go. So, Livonia Public Schools Board of Education, April 26, 2021 resolution. Whereas the trustees of the Livonia Public Schools School District Board of Education are desirous of publicly recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of students who distinguish themselves during the pursuit of their public education in the school district. And whereas Autumn Ronikowski, a junior at Stevenson High School, has distinguished herself by achieving the 2021 Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I Individual Gymnastics State Champion title on the balance beam. And whereas Autumn achieved this honor with a score of 9.575 on the balance beam. And whereas this adds to the outstanding accomplishments Autumn has achieved during the 2020-2021 season, including setting a school record on the even, uneven bars with a score of 9.575, a new school record on the balance beam with a score of 9.6, and a new school record in floor exercise with a score of 9.45. Now therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby commend and congratulate Autumn Ronikowski for her outstanding accomplishments in athletics and wish her well in her future endeavors as she applies the discipline and perseverance needed to excel in sports to all areas of her life. Congratulations. I'd like to acknowledge that Coach Lisa Broomfield is also in the audience with us this evening. <laughs> and we'll see both of you back here to do the same thing next year, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Are there comments or questions from the superintendent or the board? Mrs. Opus? Yes, thank you so much. Well, we certainly are thrilled to have Mackenzie and Autumn here this evening. And I'd like to just please ask Mr. Soroki and Mr. and Mrs. I'm going to say uh, Ronikowski, would you please stand so we can recognize you as well? Mr. Soroki. Mr. And certainly, um, I know both Coach Phil and Coach Broomfield were already recognized, but thank you both as well for your tremendous leadership and dedication to our students. And certainly Mrs. Hyman as well, representing all of our athletes um, at Stevenson High School. So Mackenzie and Autumn, I think we shared with you earlier this evening, this is truly one of the highlights um, that we love to share at our board meetings. It is not very common to have individual state champions 
and the fact that you both have achieved this, one is a sophomore and one is a junior, is truly a testament to your perseverance, your grit, especially in a year like this past year. We are so, so proud of you and we wish you every success the rest of this year and certainly going into next year. It's exciting to know that you'll both be back and we have the possibility of seeing you here again. So what a thrill it is to have you and we invite you to share any, any comments or any thoughts that you have uh, with the group as well. Either one? <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> okay. Okay. Comments from the Board of Education? Just congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to echo what Mrs. Oquist said. Um, I recently read a book titled Outliers, and, and it really spoke to the accomplishments of both Autumn and Mackenzie. Uh, and it's, it's how a combination of things have got to come into play when you have someone who really excels. Uh, whether it's in athletics or other areas of their life. And athletics was one whole chapter of this book. Um, and it, it said it absolutely takes an individual with incredible talent and incredible drive. Uh, it also mentioned you've got to have exactly the right opportunity. And, and this is where I'm going to piggyback off of Mrs. Oquist. You have to have support. Uh, you have to have parents and coaches and athletic directors who are willing to go beyond the extra mile to provide the opportunities for these kids to succeed. So um, I would just like to give one more round of applause to both Autumn and Mackenzie and their parents, coaches, and athletic directors who are here this evening. Uh, we have a motion uh, by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Yep. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Um, Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much, ladies. Congratulations and thanks for joining us this evening. As a quick uh, note, too, I forgot to mention at, at the beginning part of our meeting, we will be uh, taking a brief break after item 3E on our agenda so that we can take a few minutes to socially distantly honor our, uh, our or rather recognize our, our honorees. So um, if you'd like to hang around for a few minutes, there will be a break in just a few when we could uh, give our own personal congratulations. And then uh, it would be a comfortable time if, if you do have other things going on in your evening uh, that you can attend to those also. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3B, nomination of parents to Wayne Risa Parent Advisory Committee. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education nominate Mrs. Eileen Brandt and Mrs. Kara Clark for a three-year term on the Wayne Risa Parent Advisory Committee, PAC. The three-year term will commence on the date the nomination is approved by the Risa Board. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers. And Dr. Terriel. Good, Good evening. evening, President Burton, Board of Education, Superintendent Oquist. It is my honor to present to you my state champions <laughs> and <laughs> our nominations for Livonia Public Schools representatives to the Wayne County Parent Advisory Committee, Mrs. Eileen Brandt and Mrs. Kara Clark. In Wayne County, each local school district is encouraged to appoint one or two PAC representatives to a three-year term. Wayne County Parent Advisory Committee members serve as an information source for other parents in their community. A little bit about these two, as I shared with you at last week's Committee of the Whole, I was saving the best for the board meeting. So, <laughs> Ms. Kara Clark has served on the Wayne County Parent Advisory Committee for six years and is the current chairperson for this year as well as next year, and has also served on many subcommittees at Wayne County. Kara is involved with the Michigan Developmental Disabilities Council Public Policy Committee that impacts bills and laws at both the federal and the state level. She does private advocacy work and volunteers with the Mork Special Needs Hockey Team. Mrs. Eileen Brandt has served as one of our representatives for over 18 years. She has been on the Wayne County Executive Board many times and has served on many subcommittees, including the County Plan and the Parent Handbook Subcommittee. 
Eileen has also served in many different capacities on committees and advisory groups across Michigan, including Public Policy Committee of the Michigan Developmental Disabilities Council, Wayne Regional Autism Collaborate for Excellence, Special Education Advisory Committee for the State of Michigan, and more, which also includes her current election as a president for the Michigan Transition Services Association. Both of these outstanding nominees have students in the district and continue to support our local Livonia Parent Advisory Committee. On a personal note, both Eileen and Kara advocate strongly on behalf of all of our students with special needs in our district and support my leadership in providing the highest quality service to our students and support to our staff. Excellent. Thank you so much. Do we have comments or questions from the superintendent or the Board of Education? Mr. Centers. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so very much. Uh, it's clear that not only our students here in Livonia schools, but also regionally in the state really benefit from uh, your commitment. Uh, you know, sitting on one panel and board is, is enough, but obviously your commitment is so strong. And we hear such positive things about the things you're doing for kids. So uh, we are so thankful for everything you're doing. We're so glad you'll stay on another term, both of you. Uh, we appreciate that commitment. Thank you. Other board members or superintendent? Mr. Johnson? Thank you, President Burton. Um, as a parent of a special needs son, um, I certainly understand the need that they have for the work you do and the advocacy. Um, I don't think many people that maybe don't have that in their lives really understand uh, what it takes and the commitment. Um, so as, as a parent of one, thank you. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Mrs. Opus? I think one of the things that is so powerful about um, not only the Wayne County um, Parent Advisory Council but our, our own is not only the guidance and advocacy you can give at the state, county, and local level to decision makers and leaders regarding programming, but the support you can give to other parents and the guidance that you can give because of the journey that you've taken and the advocates you've been for your own children. And I don't know that anything can replace that when you're a parent. To be able to have a young parent who's just entering this world, be able to have guidance from, from each of you um, is really invaluable. And so beyond the ways that our school district and ultimately our students benefit, um, we thank you for sharing your journey with other families and other parents so that they too in turn can, can follow in those footsteps. So um, you've both made an indelible impact on our program here and we're so proud to have you representing us. Comments from any other board members? Um, I agree with everything that, that has been said, and, and your names are, are not new in this district. Um, I don't know either one of you personally, but annually I hear, I hear your names and, and always associated with the volunteerism that you are providing for our, not only your own kids and our kids in Livonia, but at the, the, the county and the state levels. Um, in addition to the parenting component, which, as Mrs. Oquist eloquently stated, is absolutely vital, and, and that's first line. Um, I also appreciate the work that you're able to do with policy and legislation, because so frequently the folks who are voting on those are, have never walked in your shoes. So it is vital that, you, that they can hear from folks like you who have firsthand everyday experience with what works and what doesn't and what's really needed to enhance the lives of our kids. So thank you so much for all of the work that you do. Um, it's, parenting is, is challenging. Parenting special needs has got a, a different level of challenge to it, but to be able to take time that remains out of your day and to be devoting it to the good of others is really, really commendable. So thank you so very much. Are there any other comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by uh, Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers, and Mrs. Bradford, will you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. President Burton? Yes. 
The motion passes. Thank you so much and thank you for your service. Would either one of you like to share any comments with us? Sure. You first? Well, I'll look. Clearly, I don't know how to turn a microphone. Thank you. <laughs> you don't These are a little touchy. <laughs> yeah. um, for anybody who does not, who is not aware of what the Wayne County Parent Advisory Committee is, we just wanted to give a little information. Um, it is um, there's 32 districts in the county, and so there's parent representatives from every, as Jen had already, or I'm sorry, Dr. Terry had already stated, and. Um, we, um, I had this all set in my head. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Take um, your time. <laughs> we meet monthly. Um, the Parent Advisory Committee is in existence because of a um, law that is a special education law in the state. And so um, we also have public service, our public um, school academies that are a part of there as well, parents and guardians that are, and caregivers. Uh, we meet monthly on the second Tuesday of every month. Um, the in meeting information is on the Wayne Risa website. Um, currently, we are meeting virtually because of circumstances. Um, and the meetings are open to the public. Anyone at any time is more than welcome to join us. We start at 6.30. And um, every part of our meeting, we do have a training component, an educational piece, and then we take care of, you know, PAC, member, PAC business. Um, one of my favorite parts of being part of the Parent Advisory Committee is that we're able to nominate somebody who has had an impact on um, students or um, children, um, people with disabilities. And this year, um, it's always so hard, which is so awesome, is being part of this district, is there's so many amazing people who have made huge impacts and differences on my life alone, let alone others. And um, this year, I'm so honored to nominate um, Catherine Corden. She's a paraprofessional in this district. She works with my younger son. She is just, our district is so fortunate to have her. She is amazing. When all of this, when everything started with COVID, she was went above and beyond before the, given any, before they even said anything out. She was just on top of things. And even though she has not with my son this year, she still checks in with him, makes sure he's doing okay to have that familiar face. She's just irreplaceable. We're just so That's grateful. Wonderful. Eileen, I'll turn it to you. Thank you. So, and thank you again for letting us do this. It's okay. my honor and oh. privilege. So I just want to say that since I've been on the pack for 18 years, that means I did start, you know, age two. So of course, <laughs> absolutely. Um, <laughs> just to clarify um, that we start them young. But um, it has definitely been my honor, and we learn so much, um, not only from the local level, but the, at the county level and the state level, that we're able to bring to other parents, which is just so impactful. Um, it, you know, Mr. Johnson, as you were saying, I mean, knowledge is power, mm -hmm. and being able to talk to um, different parents and along their journey, you know, as Ms. Oquist was saying, I mean, it's just, it's so important. Um, you need to have that information in order to move forward and make sure that things are being done correctly for your child who has a disability. Um, and my honoree that we will be, it's May 20th, May 20th, May 20th um, virtually, anybody can join. Um, we will be doing the special recognition um, and mine is, my honoree is going to be Carrie Parnell, who is a speech pathologist here in um, Livonia and has been for six years. Um, her dedication, her understanding of students is incredible. Um, I've seen her walk in with a student who has very limited communication and recognize immediately within 20 seconds what that student needs and how to interact with them, which, you know, sometimes you wait for years for that to happen. Um, so we've, we've had a really good time <laughs> doing yeah. this um, because, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's something that you need to do. As a parent, um, you have to educate yourself, and especially as a parent of children who have special needs. So we're very, very grateful to Livonia and to Dr. Terriel and um, to her continued support, and we thank all of you. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 3C, Points of Pride, and this month it is the Board Recognition for MASB, Michigan Association of School Board Awards. Mrs. Jenkins. We're playing musical chairs here tonight. <laughs> okay, thank you, President Burton. Um, it's my pleasure to once again recognize the achievements of our Board of Education through its continuous dedication to learning and growing through the Michigan Association of School Boards. 
For the fourth consecutive year, our Board of Education has been named an honor board for the year 2020. In addition, we have three board members who have advanced their individual levels through the MA MASB coursework. First, in order to become an honor board, uh, which is a distinction earned only by a small handful of school, school boards throughout the state of Michigan, all seven board members must have met the requirements to become a certified board member through MASB. For the benefit of the community, this achievement is no simple task. It requires many hours of classwork through a comprehensive professional development program that entails several levels of certification. To mark the occasion, we have pre uh, prepared the certificate for each of you, which reads Livonia Public Schools Certificate of Recognition, Livonia Public Schools Board of Education, and then each of your names are listed, uh, for your commitment and dedication in achieving, achieving with your board colleagues the MASB Honor Board status dated April 26, 2021, and signed by Superintendent Andrea Oquist. So I have one of, each, one of these for each of you, which I'll give to you a little bit later. Um, our board members uh, continue to advance their education by moving through the levels of certification. And this year, we are proud to honor three who have achieved those advancements. First, we would like to recognize Trustee Madeline Acosta, for achieving an MASB Level 1 certi certification. And from what I understand, she did so in record time. Um, having just come onto the Board of Education in January, it is quite impressive that Mrs. Acosta accomplished this so quickly. Congratulations on this achievement, Mrs. Acosta. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to recognize Secretary uh, Karen Bradford on receiving the Award of Distinction. This means that Mrs. Bradford has completed Level 1 and Level 2, a total of four 200 or 300 level classes, and a minimum of 208 education credits. This is reflected, oh, I should have mentioned this as well, Mrs. Acosta, your, uh, these special designations are uh, indicated on your, recognized on your certificates as well. So congratulations, Mrs. Bradford, on your uh, award of distinction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we would like to recognize Trustee Dan Centers, who also has earned the award of distinction for, again, completing the level one and level two uh, coursework along with four 200 or 300 level classes and a minimum of 208 education credits. This is also reflected on your certificate, Mr. Centers, and congratulations to you. We are so proud of each of our board members, um, as all have continuously worked to achieve the next level through the MASB coursework. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Superintendent Oakquist, who has a few wor additional words to say. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jenkins. and. Um, Wow, four years as an honor board, that is significant. I know achieving the first year um, was a, a great honor um, and recognition for our board and to have continued that each and every year and to have our newest board colleague, Mrs. Acosta, um, move forward through that certification in order to continue that honor is tremendously impressive. So for those in our community, uh, these classes are generally taken on the weekends, sometimes in the evening, but often on the weekends, and entail many, many hours of classwork, uh, coursework and reading, as well as work with colleagues from across the school boards across the state of Michigan. We are so fortunate, and it shows in the work that you do, it shows in the um, collaboration and cohesiveness that you have as a team to be able to think deeply about the issues that come before you and to represent our community um, always with the best interest of our students and always with deep consideration of our staff in mind. So we are so grateful for that. You represent us so well. And congratulations on your honor board status as well as each of your individual recognitions. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Yes. 
Um, I'd like to also thank uh, Mrs. Acosta at, at this time. Um, it, being an honor board is something that has been has become very important to this Board of Education, and, and it's not for the title, but because it represents that every board member has been committed to uh, becoming very fluent in our responsibilities, because there are several, and no one is born knowing how to do this job. Uh, but I'd like to thank each one of our fellow board members and Mrs. Acosta for very quickly coming up to speed um, on those many areas. I, I know that was, that was a series of nine classes to take just to get to level one. Um, and it's very appreciated because it, it means that everyone who's coming to this table is knowledgeable about what we are supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to be going about it. So thank you very much to, to my fellow board colleagues. It's an honor to serve with you. The next item on our agenda, thank you, Mrs. Jenkins, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next <laughs> item on our agenda is item 3D, LPS Foundation Check Presentation for 2020 Initiative. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn it back over to Mrs. Jenkins. Okay, thank you, President Burton. My friends are joining me with a super secret uh, something or other here that we will not reveal just yet. Um, as, as, you um, as you may recall, our LPS Education Foundation truly stepped up during the past, this past year with a specific fundraiser to meet a very specific need within our, our LPS community. A little over 14 months ago, when schools were closed to in-person instruction and students were learning remotely, the need for additional supports for our families became apparent. Not all households had Wi-Fi or internet. Not all households had computers laptops or other mobile, mobile learning devices for each student in their home. The foundation quickly answered that need by organizing a, a campaign called the 2020 Initiative. This program invited members of the greater community to make financial do donations for the, purchase, for the purpose of purchasing Chromebooks or laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots for families who did not have access to those tools at home. The 2020 Initiative was actually the second leg of the foundation's Bridging the Digital D Divide campaign. Joining us this evening, we have friends from the foundation uh, who will be presenting a check. And I'm going to just not say the amount. I'm gonna, I don't wanna um, steal your thunder. So we'll find out how very large this check is in just a few minutes. At this time, I would like to introduce Mrs. Lorna Durand, who is a retired LPS staff member who served more than 36 years in roles as a teacher, elementary principal, and then director of st student services. She began volunteering with the foundation in 2011 and became a director in 2012. She has been involved in the creation of the grant program and the champions program. She has served as the foundation's recording secretary and currently serves as the foundation's president. Joining Mrs. Durand is Melanie Premature who is also an LPS retiree, where she, uh, a, a retiree of the district, where she spent 30 years as a music teacher and an elementary music facilitator. Melody is currently the recording secretary, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, um, for the foundation, and she is known to hop in and help with anything and everything that the foundation is up to in any given week. I've witnessed this many times myself. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Lorna and Melody. Do I push? Yep. No, oh, yeah, just here. There you go. Okay, yeah. uh, good evening, President Burton, Board of Education members, and Superintendent Oquist. Uh, before I begin the presentation, I'd like to say on behalf of the LPS Education Foundation, I want to thank you for all that you do for the staff, for the students, and their families, especially during this very difficult time of the COVID. A 19 pandemic, so thank you. Um, it is my honor to present to the district tonight a check that represents the generosity of this community, the staff, the retirees, community individuals, as well as community companies and corporations. As you are aware, accompanying me tonight is Melody Proventure. Proventure, I never say that right, so That's I'm fine. sorry. Good. <laughs> I practiced. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, as uh, Mrs. Jenkins had stated, we developed a fundraiser uh, titled the 2020 Initiative, which ran from October 15th, 2020 to March 1st, 2021. The goal was to raise funds, as you heard, to purchase Chromebooks and or laptops, plus the hotspots for students uh, to connect to the internet from home. 
Because of the enrollment of students in the LPS Virtual Academy and the need for remote learning uh, due to, to the pandemic, the LPS Education Foundation wanted to continue to support the district students and the staff as we had done earlier in Bridging the Gap, uh, Conquering the Digital Divide program. The LPS Education Foundation originally donated $10,000 as well as matching up to $10,000 in community donations. With the donations of 64 community members totaling $15,624.87 and the $20,000 from the Education Foundation itself, it is my honor tonight to present to Livonia Public Schools a check in the amount of $35,624.87. The check will be coming to <laughs> Allison shortly. <laughs> it is here. <laughs> yeah, I give it to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Melody, did you have anything you'd like to add? Um, it's been a pleasure working with the LPS Foundation. Um, I'm also um, in charge of the grant committee as I happened to look at Lorna at the wrong moment, and so here I am. But I love every <laughs> bit of it. Um, she, you know, if you look at her just right, you get, you get volunteered, so it's wonderful. I love the grant program and the champions program is, which I, is what I've uh, taken over, and I'm also, like she said, secretary. This is a great program, and the, the community has just been so, so helpful and, and so giving, and so we thank them, too. Yeah. And we thank all the teachers, et cetera. Absolutely. And, and, and all of you guys for all you do for the district. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Are there comments or questions from the Board of Superintendents? Just uh, confirming, this is a program that's above and beyond the normal work of yes. the foundation. Absolutely, yes. yes, absolutely. There were two initiatives, as we said. Uh, mm -hmm. One started last year uh, mm -hmm. in the spring, summer, and then we continued with the 2020 initiative. And as Melody said and I had also said, we cannot thank the community mm -hmm enough for all of the support that we have received during these two initiatives to support the students and staff in the district during this very difficult time. So we just wanted to make sure that they understand our thankfulness also. Terrific. Thank you so much. We're so grateful. I mean, it has made such a difference for families. So um, the feedback we've gotten from families, whether it was the hotspot, the mobile devices, or both, that connectivity for their children um, with, with our schools, especially during the time um, when we were completely remote has truly made, a, made such a difference to them. And we're grateful to the foundation, not only for this, but the ongoing grant program, which impacts students in schools across our district every year. Um, we love to see that continue to grow. Um, and I believe it, uh, we, this past year was our first round of checks to the Competitive Edge mm -hmm. graduates. So yes. the program supported by our foundation really do have a dr direct and dramatic impact on our students and our schools. So thank you both so much and to our entire foundation team. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Leave the check. It's a big check. We are very fortunate to live in a community that is so supportive of our students, um, not only in, in financially in this way, throughout the, the COVID crisis, we've had teams of, of staff and volunteers from our community who have assisted in getting food out to our students who normally would be eating breakfast or lunches at schools uh, and just volunteering in so many ways. But we are, we are very, very fortunate. And as a, as a district, we're very appreciative and, and don't take for granted the, the generosity of our community. The next item on our agenda is item 3E, district updates from the superintendent, after which we will take uh, a break uh, to, to recognize our honorees. Mrs. Opist. Thank you so much, President Burton. So we are going to bring up on our uh, screen this evening an update for um, of some highlights from the district. So we'd love to share that the uh, Spring Arts Fine Arts Festival, which, which normally takes place uh, at the library each year. As you know, this time of year, we'd normally be headed over there before a meeting, seeing all of the amazing work of our students. And we um, are just thankful to our art educators who have put together 
um, just that virtual stroll through the amazing artwork of our students. Uh, the links can be found under the Points of Pride section on our website. And I really would encourage you, there are two slideshows. One is at the K-6 level, one is the 712 level. I know you, like we are, always wowed when we go over there and see the talents of our students. So I encourage you um, to celebrate their efforts um, by taking a few moments and heading on to the website and taking a look. We, uh, yes, Mrs. Jenkins helped with that photo. Um, uh, <laughs> goodness, thank you, Mrs. Jenkins. Um, uh, just, uh, you may see these Be Kind in Livonia signs all throughout our district. Uh, we have one out in front of our school district, uh, it, at our firehouses, at the City Hall, Rotary Park. Um, you'll, you'll see these signs and the I in kind is missing. So we invite you um, as you complete a random act of kindness throughout our community to take a moment, stop in front of one of the signs, and you do not have to make a heart symbol, um, <laughs> but you could do whatever you'd like. Uh, but just smile, wave, give a thumbs up, and truly be the I in kind in Livonia. Um, this initiative has uh, been pulled together by the City of Livonia, uh, the Livonia Police and Fire, the Chamber, our school district, Clarenceville Schools, and Rosedale Gardens Presbyterian Church. Um, this year, they have chosen uh, the educators in Livonia Public Schools as uh, who will be the recipients of their blessing bags. Um, and in addition to that, um, they have these Be Kind in Livonia signs throughout the city. Um, and certainly, I think all of us could use um, just an extra act of kindness in our lives, both to share and to receive. So we encourage you to be part of that initiative. So for the foundation, you just heard from our wonderful president and recording secretary for the LPS Education Foundation. We have a neat initiative uh, called Portraits on the Porch that will be taking place uh, this coming, not this weekend, next weekend, correct? Mm -hmm. Next weekend. Um, and we have special celebrity photographers, Mrs. Jenkins and Mrs. O'Brien, who are donating their time to take family portraits on the porch at Greenmead. So thank you to Greenmead Historical Park for um, sharing the site with us at no charge. Um, so for a small fee, a family can um, bring their, their whole crew, their favorite uh, pooch, um, and take, a, take some photos on the porch of the Hill House. Um, so we had the spots fill up within 20 minutes, if you can believe oh, wow. it. Um, we hope to be able to offer another event, but this is um, one more way to support our LPS Education Foundation, who does so much to support our school district. Uh, next, I wanted to be sure that we shared with our community information about the student vaccination clinic. We want to thank our partners right next door here at AMAC Pharmacy Services. They are partnering with us to provide an LPS student only uh, drive through vaccination clinic this week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night from five to eight here at central office uh, in the back lot, we'll have a, a process to take um, students through ages 16 and up. So students uh, at high school, LTP, the Western Wayne Skill Center, 16 to 26 um, are able to receive their vaccination, COVID-19 vaccinations here, and then in three weeks, their second dose. Uh, a sign up went out through, to, uh, through the email system. If you have any questions, please contact the district. We would be happy to help you get signed up. Um, we've had some questions about whether or not we have any additional spot, spots available to family members. We anticipate we will uh, perhaps on Wednesday and Thursday evening. So we'll get information out to our community if we have some additional spots available. So again, we want to thank AMAC Pharmacy Services for partnering with us to provide this really accessible and convenient clinic for students uh, within Livonia Public Schools. Uh, next, we wanted to share with our community our excitement about planning for the class of 2021. They certainly deserve a special celebration. So uh, plans are being made for our seniors to have a safe, special, and fun events, such as prom and graduation. Our commencements will be held um, as they were back in the old days. Mm -hmm. um, at least uh, I would consider my graduation back in the old days. Uh, yeah. So uh, they will take place on our newly renovated fields. Um, and we, that will allow us to have our graduates have some of their family members there, which we know is so very important. We do have rain dates set, so that information has gone out to our families. Um, and prom will also be held outdoors on school grounds. So I just really want to give a shout out to our uh, students who have given feedback on ideas for those celebrations 
and our staff and administration at our schools for pulling together these special events. Last year, they just knocked it out of the park in finding ways to celebrate our class of 2020, um, and they're doing so once again. We'll share just a few uh, quick photos from our spring sports of uh, tennis and baseball and lacrosse and uh, track and field. It's been an exciting sports season, and for the most part, we've had some pretty decent weather. Recently, we had um, a charity uh, baseball, a charity softball game between Stevenson and Churchill. That's an annual event, well attended, and our uh, mayor threw out the first pitch. Um, we recently had our track and field uh, championship, city champs, and uh, Churchill uh, were, were the girls track and field city champs, and Stevenson, the boys track and field city champs. Uh, recently, our uh, hockey team from Churchill was acknowledged as KLAA Scholar Athletes, and there you see the Stevenson soccer team ready to roll. We want to congratulate our Livonia Warriors. As you all know, we have a very dedicated uh, group as part of our Livonia Warriors robotics team, and they recently um, won a district award, and the chairman's, uh, the chairman's team for uh, the Livonia Warriors Chairman's Team for winning a district award. Um, they will present at the state level, um, and this requires truly hundreds of hours of preparation. Um, for those of you that have been involved, as they prepare um, to go for the Chairman's Award, it requires a tremendous amount of effort and preparation on the part of the students, their mentors, um, and our staff leadership. Uh, Congratulations to Catherine T. for winning the district's Dean's List Award. She will now move on to the state level. And uh, just sharing a few pictures from, from springtime fun. So we love that our staff and our parents share um, both in-person and virtual, virtual <coughs> photos. So I'll just share some of, we know there's smiling faces behind those masks. You can, you can see it in their eyes. So we'll share a few of the photos, both in person and virtual. We've got our young scientists ready to go and celebrating Earth Day last week. Some outdoor, some new seating at Churchill High School. Classes are enjoying that opportunity. And then we have some uh, STEM work going on across the district. Last week, we highlighted really some of the most special folks in our district, our secretaries and administrative assistants across our schools and departments. Um, they truly are one of a kind, and we are so blessed in our district to have individuals who are not only extraordinarily knowledgeable, um, but very dedicated and caring. And uh, it is often the very first face you see and the last face you see as you begin and end each day. So thank you to each of them. And we are thinking ahead. As you know, we've spent quite a bit of time at the past few meetings talking about next year. Uh, so we have talked about the offerings of Livonia Virtual. Uh, last week, Mr. Green shared information with us about the elementary program. So just a reminder to our elementary families, if you are electing to remain in person, you do not need to do anything. However, you, if you are requesting to go to Livonia Virtual for next year, you do need to make that selection by May 7th. And then finally, a reminder that the bond election is May 4th. Uh, to learn about the proposal, there is a, a great deal of information on the website. And again, next Tuesday, May 4th, is the election for the 2021 bond proposal. So thank you so much, President Burton, for letting us share some highlights of our students, our staff, and our schools. Thank you so much. We are going to take a brief recess right now so that we can uh, say a personal congratulations to our honorees of the evening, and there are several of you. Uh, we will be back in about five minutes. We are now at recess.
Welcome back to the regular meeting of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education meeting of April 26, 2021. We are rejoining you after a brief recess to congratulate the honorees of the evening. Uh, we are on to the next item on our, on our agenda, which is item 3G, I'm sorry, 3F, which is written communications. Do any board members have written communications to share? Seeing none, we are on to the next item, which is 3G, which is audience communications. Uh, as a reminder, audience communications is a time that the board sets aside to listen to comments from the community. Uh, it is not a question and answer session, but rather a listening session. If there's a specific question that uh, any audience member would like an, an answer to, if it is an, uh, along the topics that the Board of Education handles, uh, and our responsibilities, as a reminder, are to hire and evaluate the superintendent, to set policy for the district, and set the long-term strategic goals and align the financing to those goals. So if there is a specific question and it pertains to those areas, you could expect an answer from the Board of Education. If there is a specific question and it pertains to anything else, typically the day-to-day -day operations of the district, you would expect an, uh, an answer from our administrative team, which would be Mrs. Oquist or a member of the Cabinet. We do have one uh, individual who is uh, could be going to be participating in audience communications this evening. As a reminder, audience communications is limited to three minutes per person. Uh, we will have a little timer go off at, nope, over here. Mrs. Bradford will have a, a little timer that'll go off at the three minute point. Uh, so if you hear that tone, uh, that's kind of your clue to wrap up your comments. We just find that a little bit more polite way than to interrupt an, an individual. Uh, we do have one person who would like to participate in audience communications this evening, and that is Adam Adamski. Mr. Adamski, if you would like to take a seat at the table directly across from me, and there's a microphone there. Any one of, either one of those uh, chairs or microphones will work. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Welcome this evening. And can you just do me a favor and, and uh, take a look at the light on your microphone and make sure that it's green? If it is right, uh, right at the bottom of the base, yes, looks like, okay, Mrs. Mrs. Wozniak's on her way over to help you with that. Just a quick tap. Go. There you go. All right, you tell me when to start. You may, you may begin whenever you'd like, sir. Good evening. My name is Adam Adamski. I live at 11395 Farmington Road, apartment 16. Uh, quick about my background, I'm not here about that. I have a bachelor's degree from Michigan State in political science and history. I'm a long-serving United States Navy veteran and a successful businessman. Uh, I'm here to talk about the bond issue that's up for the election on Tuesday, May 4th. <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, no school district in the state of Michigan has ever requested a 20-year bond. The current bond that you have was an eight-year bond, which was 2013 to May of this year. So 20 years, I believe, a too long a period of time. Also, the bond issue, in my opinion, is exploitation of our students and the taxpayers, uh, grandparents who are paid their taxes uh, for the school district. Just around our quote, great city, just look around our great city, and you will see how many businesses are for sale and for lease and for rent. This is no time to ask for a 20-year tax routine. So we're asking the people to come out en masse to vote no next Tuesday. If they've already voted, you can't retrieve your ballot up until 8 o'clock on the night of May 8th. Uh, another point here is that uh, the value of our residential, commercial, and industrial property will go up, not down, with a tax reduction. If you go to sell your house and you're selling it at $300,000 and it's assessed at $150,000, if the tax is lower, it will sell faster than it, if you it, it maintain the current tax. So the tax will go down if you vote no. So we're asking a no vote. Uh, that's the other point was uh, on, uh, we have sent out letters to all of our elected politicians and uh, we have one here from our beloved mayor who supports the bond issue. All the city council and all the board members that we know of, elected officials, do not represent the taxpayers of Livonia. Who represents the taxpayers? The taxpayers, all right? So we're asking the taxpayers to come out en masse like they did in November for the presidential election 
for over 62,000 people voted, come out in mass and vote a resounding no on this tax. What they should have done was ask for a five-year bond. We could have prioritized the various things that we could have gone for. Uh, another issue for us is uh, people who send their children to private schools are paying a double tax. They're paying for the private school, yet they still have to pay the tax on their property. This tax covers all property in the city of Livonia, residential, commercial, and industrial, Ford Motor Company, Amazon, etc. And uh, we'll close real quick with saying this. Uh, we're asking again that you come out and vote, uh, a resounding no vote, and, and we believe that you guys, including this council, the city council, not one of you stand, stood up for the taxpayers. We're, we're, we're interested in the taxpayers first in this community and everybody else second, the school district and the city. Now, one politician, including our beloved mayor, she signed a letter, Maureen Miller Bronson, in support of the bond issue. Well, we need to elect different people. We need people who are going to support the taxpayers, and you guys didn't do it. So, again, we're asking that you come out and vote in mass on Tuesday. If you've already voted yes, you can get your ballot back and get a new ballot, you can change it. So, Mr. Damsky, could you, to, you've exceeded your three minutes. Could you wrap up your comments, please? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you again for your time. And again, we ask that you uh, come out and vote and vote a resounding no. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening. You're welcome. I will make one factual correction. Most bonds are 20 or 30 years in length, not a, not a five year that was stated. The next item on our agenda is item uh, 3H, response to prior audience communications, and I have none this evening. The next item on our agenda is item 4, consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Acosta. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. Item 5A, minutes of the regular meeting of March 22nd, 2021. Item 5B, minutes of the special meeting of April 5th, 2021. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Uh, are there any uh, any comments or questions on the consent agenda? No. Seeing none, Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 6, instruction matters and 6a is reconfirmation of the extend, extended COVID-19 continuity of learning plan. May I have a motion please? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District reconfirm the continuity of learning plan that was approved on September 28th, 20, September 28th, 2020. The plan recommends that students continue to receive instruction, either through the Livonia virtual or in-person instruction in our schools. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers. And a moment here. Mrs. O'Brien. Thank you, President Burton. Thank you. Um, Yes, this is our monthly reconfirmation um, of our Return to Learn plan, which we uh, approved several months ago. And each month since, you have voted to um, continue with the plan that we put forth, which is offering our students two forms of learning this year, Livonia Virtual, which is a 100% online uh, educational opportunity, and our in-person instruction in our schools. As a part of the reconfirmation, we monitor attendance and two-way communications. And over the last month, our attendance percentages have been the week of March 22nd, 88%. The week of April 5th, 89.4%. The week of April 12th, 89.2%. And this past week, the week of April 19th, 91%. Um, our two-way communication for our Livonia virtual students is regular attendance because we teach live three times a day. So we take attendance each one of those. 
So we are asking that we vote to reconfirm our return to learn plan. Thank you. Are there questions or, or comments from the superintendent or the board? Mr. Centers. Uh, just a uh, <coughs> reminder to the public that this is part of uh, the state law for this year, that we have to do this every month, uh, that uh, this is not <coughs> something kind of we're fresh or new. It's just uh, fulfilling, fulfilling a requirement. Thank you very much, Mr. Centers. I appreciate that. Any other comments or questions? Nope. Seeing none, we have a motion by see here, Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers, for the reconfirmation of the extended COVID-19 continuity of learning plan. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes, thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 6B, approval of grant purchase for adult education program. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of technology, hardware, and other instructional resources for the adult education program through CDWG for a total expenditure of $157,164. Support. Support. I had kind of a chorus there. <laughs> Heard several. We have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mr. Johnson. And let me see here. Uh, Mr. Willenborg, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, as we've discussed in our prior meetings, uh, through a reallocation of unclaimed adult education funding from the state of Michigan, the district was awarded, uh, after we applied for a grant, uh, $174,000 to be utilized in the support of adult education programming in the Livonia Public Schools. The identified need was in the realm of technology upgrades for staff and students. Um, this purchase is funded through the State School Act, Section 107. It is not a general fund expenditure. Uh, ask for your support uh, for these uh, technology items. Thank you. Do we have comments or questions by the, from the board or superintendent? Seeing none. Uh, we have a motion. Uh, thank you very much for the explanation. And this is one of the items that I was referring to earlier that we've talked about uh, at least a couple of other meetings prior to this evening. So, yes. um, and I'm happy that we're able to utilize these grants to to uh, secure additional tech items for our students. 108 Surface Go Pros. Um, uh, uh, over 20 uh, Surface Go probes for uh, our staff as well. Terrific. Uh, uh, interactive uh, goggles, um, smart boards. Uh, it's a it's whole kit and caboodle, if you will. That's terrific. And one nice thing about the grant dollars such as these, when they are one-time dollars, I appreciate the fact that the district is looking for a one-time purchase that will carry over many years, which is exactly what, what this purchase will do. Mm -hmm. It'd be a big boost for our adult education program. And that's one of the programs that we have not put as many resources into as, as some of our other programs. So it's, yeah. it's nice to have these, these available dollars to do this. Sure. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Uh, Mr. Centers, supported by Mr. Johnson, to, for the approval of grant purchase for the adult education program. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mr. Centers. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. And President Burton. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item 7, business matters, and 7A is the, the approval of roofing design and construction services from RTA. Thank you very much, Mr. Willenborg. Thank you all. Uh, may I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District approve the recommendation to award the contract for roofing design and construction services at Franklin High School, Stevenson High School, Grant Elementary School, and Garfield Community School to Roofing Technology Associates, RTA, Livonia, Michigan, for a total cost of $171,680 and authorize the superintendent or her designee to negotiate and execute the final contract. Support. 
We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers. And good evening, Mr. Francis. Hello, President Burton. Uh, we have uh, this evening Roofing Technology Associates as the uh, roofing designer. And this is uh, a sinking fund project. As we discussed at length at the Committee of the Whole, we are uh, asking them to, at this point, simply design the, the roofs discussed. And that was a, a partial of uh, Stevenson High School, a partial portion of the roof at Franklin High School, the uh, full roof at Grant Elementary, as well as designing the what we're calling the, the full uh, roof at Garfield that needs to be done, that, that is um, the rubber roof and, and, and not the metal portion, which as we talked about and, and showed at the time of the Committee of the Whole is a significant portion. That's why it's a much smaller square footage. So uh, based on the age, the current conditions, the work orders that have come in on these roofs, as well as using the roofing assessment that the uh, report that was commissioned by the district, these uh, roofing structures that were, were mentioned uh, are in need of replacement. And before we can do that, we first need to have them designed. And Roofing Technology Associates, they will design the project, act as architect, uh, assist the district during the bid process, and also help oversee the replacement projects on behalf of the district when they're actually being re-roofed. So we do, again, this is a sinking fund expenditure for this professional um, services, and we recommend uh, the, the approval of this uh, resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Are there comments or questions? Mr. Centers. So uh, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Francis and the work of the folks in our facilities uh, to, for really taking a close look at. We know that there are several roofs in very bad shape um, and that's why they're on our schedule to be repaired in the next coming years. But they look closely at uh, the items where there's leaks, where we have failures, uh, prioritize those. Um, so, uh, you know, the urgency of these repairs are, are, are pretty urgent and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them designed and eventually get done. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And, and I'd like to, to note, and we talked about this a little bit, the committee as well, but for those who are just tuning in for the first time, designing them and then we bid them separately. And that is to the advantage of the district. So if, if at any given point when we put out for bid, prices spike in the roofing industry, if, if it goes above, uh, much above the, the anticipated budget, we can always uh, do some of the roofs, not all the roofs to design in because frankly, once it's designed, it's okay if, if we do it the following year. But our intention would be to put these out for bid for the projects of the summer of 2022. And again, we, we have flexibility in the way we're, we are putting those out to bid. When, then that time comes. Just a reminder, we're not bidding them now. We're just talking about right. professional services to design. Got it. Mm -hmm. Any other, thank you, Mr. Centers, and any other comments or questions from the board or superintendent? Mrs. Bonifield? Mr. Francis, can you talk a little bit um, about where the funding comes from for these roofs? I think you said the, the sinking fund. This is and the sinking fund, maybe yes. This a, is a little bit about um, the number of square footage we have and some of the costs that it, it takes to, uh, to maintain these buildings. Sure. The, the sinking fund, um, as, as has been discussed uh, over, the, over the years, is a 10-year uh, item, and it goes towards the, the funding sources coming in for a 10-year period. And we have a 10-year uh, facility plan that we use because uh, items in that facility plan are eligible for sinking fund dollars to be put towards them, items such as the roofs that we're talking about tonight, items such as paving, boilers, uh, emergency re uh, uh, replacements and repairs, et cetera, we are able to use that sinking fund. Sinking fund comes in um, from the community's vote in, and I'm going to blank here, but I'm going to say 2019 was the year that we did that one, and, and somebody correct me if I got that one wrong. Time is, is now standing still for me. <laughs> but in 2019, so that we have a 10-year funding source with that sinking fund. And just a quick number uh, to, to give some, some scale to, to the project. Um, I'm trying to find if I have the square footage on these roofs that we're designing, and I'm gonna be afraid that I don't have them. Oh, here we do. So at, at just, just for some scale, at Stevenson, that partial that we're gonna be designing and then looking to uh, replace is over 139,000 square feet. 
at the portion at Stevenson. The portion at Franklin is 165,450 square feet. Garfield is small because we talked about that has a, a portion that's metal. So the part that we will be looking at is the 20,581 square feet, which is still significant. It would be more like 10, 10 to 12 homes for the average homeowner uh, with regard to the, the, the square footage. And Grant is over 58,000 square feet. So this project alone, uh, as we look at this design, is 383,234 square feet of roofing just in what we're talking about this evening. The district has facilities uh, just under 3 million square feet across over across approximately 36 square miles portions of Westland the northern portion of Westland and a majority of the city of Livonia are covered in that uh, we have um, nearly 700 acres of property across the district so we have a large scale which is why something like the sinking fund having a 10-year funding source and then also having a 10-year facility plan to match up with that source is important to continue to chop away at the, the, the needs of our buildings and our properties, which are, as everyone uh, knows, are 60 to 70 years old from when they were built. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other, Mrs. Bonfield, are you all set? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? All righty. Thank you, Mr. Francis, for staying on top of this um, and, and to our community for supporting our sinking yes. fund. Um, that is specifically uh, primarily designed for, as uh, historically has been boilers, roofs, and parking lots, the big three. Uh, and, and now we can also use that for security, I believe. Uh, but those are important big ticket items that we just simply have to maintain on an ongoing basis. Yes, I, I agree with your sentiment. Yeah. All righty. Uh, any other comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers, and for the uh, approval of roofing design and construction services from RTA. And Mrs. Bradford, would you please, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. And President Burton. Yes. Thank you. That motion passes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Francis. The next item on our agenda is item 7B, approval of central office furniture purchase. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of furniture for central office from Interior Environments in Novi, Michigan for a total cost of $521,250. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers. And Mrs. Smith, thank welcome. You. Thank you, President Burton, and thank you, Board, for the time um, that you allotted for us last week to walk through in detail the plans for the central office renovation, including this furniture purchase. Um, so we were able to go into a lot of detail, so I won't do that tonight. But just as a um, reminder for our community, um, the central office building is home to 10 different departments and nearly 70 employees. Um, not only do we house uh, those 70 employees, this is also where we hold board meetings, also where we welcome new families for registration, also where we do uh, a lot of interviewing for new staff members, so definitely a whole hub of activity, including in the normal world where we will host professional development for our staff. And so um, I did want to make note of one change since um, the committee meeting, a change in the price. And it goes towards one of our goals for this new space, not only to create welcoming uh, environment for folks, uh, achieve acoustic privacy, um, to provide additional collaboration spaces. So uh, we were able to secure the final pricing for the um, conference rooms. It's a scheduling system that'll go on each conference room to show their availability. So that's the change uh, that we see tonight from what we discussed at the committee meeting. But we're very excited for this purchase. Um, as we were just mentioning, the sinking fund and our 2013 bond, um, the funding for this is going to come from our capital projects fund. So the revenue from the capital project fund comes from sale of property. So the intent of administration and the board was to align this sale of property, this one-time revenue with a one-time uh, expenditure, such as a renovation. And so 
we're happy that this project accomplishes that. I would like to mention that um, the 2013 bond, none of those funds were used here at this administrative building. And also, I won't say that no sinking fund has ever been you know, spent here, but we haven't done any kind of major renovation with sinking funds here too. So this will be the first um, major work done here in quite a long time. You can see we've done some um, cosmetic fixes down here in the basement and it looks great. And uh, we thought this would be now the time to move that to our first and second floor as well. Thank you. Mr. Centers. Uh, so I know you're not getting into a lot of detail tonight, but um, one important thing that yourself and Mr. Francis explained was that when we're doing the renovations to the top two floors of this building, um, there's not going to be a lot of built-in components to the construction. A lot of what we're going to see uh, as far as physical spaces and separations go are considered furniture because they're not permanent structures. Exactly. Unlike yeah. what we saw in um, a number of our buildings where we did see built-in casework, we went with the furniture option here, and that okay. builds in flexibility for us for the future. So as department yeah. shift and needs shift, that we'll have more flexibility to adjust. Yeah, so that uh, reflects what we're seeing here tonight, and it's not the hard construction, it's everything else that's kind of filling in the gaps. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And just to note, overall, still um, under the projected budget sent, uh, set initially, both for the hard construction costs as well as the furniture, um, still under uh, the budgeted amount, which we had discussed from the get-go. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members of the board? For those who may not have had the opportunity to, to visit our building, um, you could have visited it in 1982 you probably could have visited it in 1972 or perhaps in the 60s, and it would look almost exactly the same as it does today. Um, the, the majority of, of this board office has not been touched uh, in all the decades that this school, di school district has been in existence, so it is long overdue for work. We did do some window replacement just a few years ago. Uh, as, as an example of how much we try to squeak out all of the value possible out of the, the uh, resources that we have in our school district, one of the windows was original to the building and literally fell out. Mm -hmm. uh, it, thankfully, no one was hurt, but uh, it, it, we have now since replaced the windows, <laughs> so that's going to be done. But, uh, but rest assured, this building has, has gotten decades of use and is long overdue for an upgrade. So we're happy to be able to do that and make it not only uh, more visually pleasing, but uh, make it more efficient uh, with the HVAC systems uh, and more efficient workflow and, and uh, make it work better for the people who, who work here and, and Mrs. Smith, as you said, those who visit here, um, more opportunities for some private spaces for conversations that need to be private and so forth. So um, it's, it is long overdue and I'm, I'm thrilled that we're able to do it. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion, uh, uh, let me see here, approval of center, I'm sorry, motion made by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers for the approval of central office furniture purchase. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. And President Burton? Yes. Thank you. And that motion passes. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. The next item on our agenda is item 8, personnel matters, and 8A is teacher for tenure. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and acknowledge that tenure status will be granted to the following teacher effective on the respective date. Rebecca Johnston, April 8, 2021. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. And Mr. Abate, welcome this evening. Thank you, President Burton. Hello, everybody. Our teacher for tenure on this agenda has successfully completed the district's requirements for probationary teachers, including years of service, evaluations, overall performance, and documentation of student growth. We've carefully reviewed all supporting materials along with the recommendations of our building administration and have determined that this educator should be granted tenure status with the Livonia Public Schools. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board or the superintendent? Comments, questions? Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, absolutely. Uh, we have a motion for, by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Bonifield, for teacher for tenure. And Mrs. Bradford, would you take the roll? Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mr. Johnson? 
Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. President Burton. Yes. Thank you. And that motion passes. And congratulations to Ms. Johnston. The next item on our agenda is item 8B, leaves of a, uh, leave of absence. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Acosta. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the request for a leave of absence listed below. Emily Mitani, date effective 2021-22 school year. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mr. Abate. Yes, this staff member listed in the board documents is indeed requesting a leave from the Livonia Public Schools for the 2021-2022 school year. This request is made in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement for her bargaining unit, and I ask that you please grant approval of this leave. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Uh, Costa, supported by Mrs. Jarvis for a leave of absence. And Mrs. Radford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 8C, resignations, and that is just for board information only. We do not require a vote on that item. Uh, item 8D is retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia <coughs> Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for services rendered by Mary Liz Allison, Amy Atwater Trucan, Catherine Corden, Patricia Dubel, Michelle Guerrero, Erin Kearns, Rita Magdowski, Maurice Pinard, Elizabeth Quashney, Polly Rothermel, and Anne Marie Tracy. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Abate. Yes, tonight we honor and congratulate 11 members of our LPS family who have retired mid year or have declared their intention to retire at the end of this school year. As these staff members leave Livonia Public Schools, they take with them a combined total of 280 years of experience. On behalf of the administration, I would like to thank these wonderful staff members for their dedicated years of service that they have provided to the students of Livonia Public Schools, and I ask the board to please adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for our retirees. It's a thank lot of years. You. That's, a, that's, I think that's the largest that I can remember hearing all in one swoop. Are there comments or questions from the superintendent or the board? Mrs. Bonifield. I just want to say when when we uh, give the stats on how many years, it I think it's um, a kind of a testament to the district and how long that people stay. Because most of the time, you know, it, it's 25, 30, 35 years, and so it doesn't take very very many um, employees to retire to rack up a really big number of years and. I just I think that's really great and I, I, I congratulate everyone for sticking with us and and taking care of us and hope you have a great time in your retirement and move on into a, a wonderful future very well said yes. any other comments or questions congratulations comments? and, and yeah. thank you absolutely thank you for thank you seems like way too small of a phrase to use for that that amount of service and mm -hmm. for for entire careers for most of these folks mm -hmm. so they will be truly missed we have a motion from uh, a motion by mrs jarvis supported by mr johnson uh for retirements mrs bradford would you please take the roll mrs jarvis yes mr johnson yes mr centers yes mrs bonifield yes mrs bradford says yes mrs acosta yes President Burton. Yes, motion passes. Thank you, mm -hmm. and thank you, Mr. Abate. The next item on our agenda is item nine, hearing from board members. Item A is, or item A1 is uh, first reading of board policies. There will not be a vote on these policies tonight as this is just the for exactly that is the first reading of those policies. 
Sorry, bear with me for a moment. The recommendation is that the policy committee has reviewed the proposed revisions for the following board bylaws. First reading of profession, professional, I'm sorry, professional personnel board policy, GBC selection and recruitment, GBF teacher replacement, GB, I'm, GBG staff reductions and recalls, GBIA teacher evaluations. As this is the first reading uh, and these policies are brief, I, I would like for us to read these policies so that uh, we have these officially on the record. Again, they, we will probably not have much discussion on these because this is again an item that for which we have had considerable discussion at previous meetings. Um, I will go ahead and read these unless Mr. Johnson you would care to do so as policy chair and I put you on the spot here because I did not talk to you about that earlier. <laughs> I apologize. Whatever you're comfortable with, President Burton. It's, it's a, I can read it if you'd okay. like. Okay. And we're, what we're going to do is just read the, the version that we are going to be voting on at the next meeting. Okay. The first is GBC, Professional Personnel Selection and Recruitment. The Board of Education desires candidates who have outstanding profe uh, personal, professional qualities and will perform at the very highest level for our students. Teachers and other professional staff must be qualified for full state approval in the area of their specialty. Only teachers who have a valid teaching certificate or authorization will be considered for positions in the Livonia Public Schools School District. All teaching candidates recommended to the Board of Education for per, uh, positions with the school district will have been personally interviewed. The superintendent or designee is authorized to make a commitment for the school district subject to the approval of the Board of Education after a, a complete review of the qualifications and other pertinent data. Thank you. This is pretty much just a language cleanup on this. Mr. Bhatti, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, that's one. This is okay. very straightforward. There's no substantive, substantive change uh, okay. to the intent or to the okay. language. Any questions or comments from the board? Again, there, there likely may not be because this is these next few are, are items that we have discussed at length in the past. So, yes, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradfield. Um, Mr. Abadi, the uh, the second paragraph starts teachers and other professional staff the third paragraph says all teaching candidates um, I didn't know if there's a reason for that or if for consistency purposes um, we would add uh, teaching candidates and other professional staff um, that actually does make a lot of sense mm. um, just for consistent mm. okay no it does it, it, it that makes sense to me I have no problem making that change Sure. Are we okay? Okay. That's okay with me, Mrs. Mrs. Oquist. Do you have any input on that? Sounds great. Okay. And this is the entire purpose of having a first reading and a second reading, even after we've gone through prior prior uh, meetings on these. Sure. Okay. Mr. Bate, can you note that change for us? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mrs. Wozniak, that'll be in the next week or the next month's uh, version of this policy. Thank you. Any other comments on this policy? Uh, let's go to the next, which is uh, GBF. The GBF is Personnel Teacher Placement. The Board of Education acknowledges that having teachers assigned in their area of certification and endorsement is highly valued. All elementary, secondary, and special education teachers must be certified or authorized to teach <coughs> the grade levels and subject areas to which they are assigned. The decisions regarding teacher placement will be at the sole discretion of the superintendent or his, her designee. Thank you. Any comments or questions on this policy? All right. We'll go on to the next policy, which is GBG. GBG, Personnel, Staff Reductions and Recalls. All personnel decisions shall be based on retaining effective teachers in situations involving staffing slash program reduction 
or any other personnel decision resulting in the elimination of a position. This policy shall also apply when recalling or hiring to fill a previous staffing slash program reduction or any other personnel decision that resulted in the elimination of a position. Any comments or questions from the board or superintendent? No? Okay. And we will go on to the last policy of this evening. Which is policy. This is policy GBIA personnel teacher evaluations. The Board of Education delegates to the superintendent or her his slash her designee the function of adopting and implementing an evaluation tool for teachers that is consistent with the requirements of the law. Any other comments or questions on that? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Bate. And these will all be on the agenda for a second reading and final vote at our next month's regular meeting in May. The other portion of hearing from board members that we historically do is open up this portion of the meeting to any board members who have anything that they would like to share, if that is the case. Do we have any board members who would like to share anything this evening? Mrs. Bonifield. I would just like to say tonight, I know we kind of got back into the, the groove of things a little bit. We had a lot of people come up and, and um, talked about a lot of great accomplishments um, in the district. And I just want to say, one of the real highlights of this this evening was the fact that Livonia is a community. We we talked about <laughs> that, that, right? And uh, uh, I just I, I just want to say I think our community brings us together. And I think one of the things that's great about our dis our our community, sorry is you know the the school system and i think we pride ourselves on that and it just it makes such a great um community for for uh, new people to come in i know uh, one of my neighbors is selling their house they had three children that went through livonia public schools it's a four bedroom home and we're i'm hoping to see a, a new young family their kids are all graduated and and on the way out and uh so i think it's just really um, a heartfelt thank you to the community who is always there to help the district and, and, and fill in the gaps where we need to. And with the, the really tough uh, school funding situation, it just everything that the community does for us is so impactful. And in order to keep our property values up, to keep new people coming into the district, just to be able to educate um, our children appropriately. It just, the community is always reaching out a hand and helping us with that. And I think that we, and I know we've, we said that every time when we talked about the 2013 bond, a, a huge thank you that we couldn't do this. You know, um, my kids graduated right at the end of the 2013 bond and they were really, I mean, <laughs> there was so much that they missed out on because we didn't have, you know, any way to update our buildings and and just the the new and fantastic things, the the uh, technology and and all the brilliant things that that I think the kids missed out on because you know they were operating in 60-year-old buildings with 60-year-old technology with you know a lot of stuff where we you know kind of hodgepodged everything together, especially after we went through the recession. And I think one of the key, you know, factors that I think we all appreciate is um, through the funding initiative um, that was done, we know that the state of Michigan uh, gives us dollars to educate our children, but does not give us dollars to update and maintain our buildings. And so I think it's, it just, we have 3 million square feet of buildings and I, I just can't thank the, the public enough for their support getting us through and, and helping us with this and, and making sure that our kids have a safe and welcoming environment. 
And so um, I just, I think we had a lot of community, we talked about a lot of community um, involvement tonight, and I just, I wanted to say publicly that it matters. It makes a difference. It makes a difference not only to our kids, but to our community, and brings us together to be one of the best communities in the state of Michigan. Thank you so much. Are there any other board members who would like to share? Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you, President Burton. I'd like to commend the administration for working with the AMAC Pharmacy and getting together the, um, the evening inoculations, drive-through inoculations that will be happening this week for our uh, eligible students ages 16 to 26. This is going to help bring our district closer to normal. This is going to enable our graduating seniors to have as close to a normal graduation season as possible. And I encourage all eligible students to take advantage of this tremendous opportunity. Thank you. And as a follow-up question on that, Mrs. Oquist, can you confirm that if a student is fully inoculated, fully vaccinated, that uh, should they be exposed to uh, a case in our school that they would no longer have to uh, close contact quarantine? That's correct. So if they had their first dose this week, in three weeks they would receive their second dose. Um, two weeks after their second dose, they're considered fully vaccinated. And according to the health department guidelines, once uh, a student or staff member is fully vaccinated, they no longer uh, have to quarantine either this year or in the future um, once they've been vaccinated. That's excellent. So that would, that not, not only would that take care of this, any, con any situation this year, but also into next the fall school as well. year and, and and as we go forward yes and again the the reason that we uh, are offering the Pfizer vaccine is because that is the only one of the three that is approved for 16 to 18 year olds is that correct that's correct any the trials were only done on uh, 18 and above for the Moderna and the Johnson and Johnson mm -hmm. so Pfizer is the only one that has been approved by the FDA for 16 and 17 year olds and that is the vaccine that they will be utilizing okay great Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for the enormous amount of legwork that you and, and your team have done in order to make that happen. That was no small uh, uh, thing to pull off. So Absolutely. Lots of, lots of uh, great hearts and minds behind me here yeah. on our team who uh, worked hard um, to find partners. We tried many different venues. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were many folks uh, in, on our team involved um, in trying a, lo a lot of different ways to get to this point, it just worked out to have someone um, who's uh, just a next door neighbor, um, a close partner, and uh, that we're able to actually do it on site because certainly that's one factor as our families had asked us about that opportunity, would there be an opportunity within our district? That idea of convenience and accessibility we know for, you know, for most people is a big factor. So um, there are still spots available and we'd be, we'd be happy to service any of our students 16 to 26. And as a reminder, they need to go on our website in order to sign up, or, or they've received information via email from the district and they can follow those instructions? They did. They received an email on Friday and then a reminder email Sunday. We'll send another one tomorrow. Okay. Um, and if we're able to, we will open that up to other family members if there are still spots available. Okay. And how would they find out about that? Uh, we'll send an email on that. Okay. Yes, right. with the link to the Sign Up Genius. Okay. And then there's also a registration form for the pharmacy. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to, uh, to our awesome team for get pulling this together. Absolutely. That's no small accomplishment. Uh, any other board members who would like to share anything this evening? I'd just like to take a moment to thank uh, not only our superintendent, but our entire cabinet team. Uh, our board meetings could not happen without every single one of our cabinet members. Uh, and Frequently, we are whipping through items pretty quickly. Please know that, that how deeply your work is appreciated by our Board of Education. We could literally could not do our work without having such deep and thorough information that we get from each and every one of you. So thank you so much. Your, your expertise and, and your caring about our community is, is very recognized and very acknowledged. And, and uh, it's, it is wonderful having a board, and then we talk about a board and cabinet, or a board and superintendent team, but in this district, it really is a board, superintendent, and cabinet team. It's, and it's uh, wonderful to work with this large of a group of people who are, who are this terrific at doing their jobs. So thank you so very much. Anything else that folks would like to add this evening? Seeing not, uh, we have come to uh, our German on our, the, on our uh, agenda. I wish you all a wonderful 
evening and a healthy, happy time until we meet again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're adjourned.